Hey everybody, Pastor Max Lynn, St. John's Presbyterian Church. We are at the end of the month of July, and uh, we're looking at Romans and Mr. Paco. Romans and a flower and Mr. Paco. Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 39, likewise. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God and who are called according to God's purpose. This is one of the, the great and powerful passages of all scripture and all literature of all time. It's just a beautiful piece, and there's more to come I'll pick up later. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this story uh, from our good friend of St. John's, uh, Julia. She, she tells the story of her parents who came to America in 1950 in their 40s with five children. They got their visa from a Dutch couple they saved during World War II by incorporating them into the family and found a place for their son, Robert, to hide with another family because he didn't, didn't look like their children. So Julia's father, Jacob and Leo Krell started a partnership during the war to make and sell fur, co fur coats on the black market to pay for the food of the Krells who couldn't get food rations because nobody knew they, who they were, what they existed. Uh, so Julia's dad had six siblings, so he just added a sibling to the family. And they dressed alike to fool the neighbors and told the neighbors they had to move in with them because of the bombing of Rotterdam, in which 20,000 people became homeless in one day of bombing. They had to keep to themselves and had confidence in, and have confidence in themselves to appear deserving to walk the streets and do business. They could have been killed if they had been discovered. Near the end of the war, says Julia, my dad said it had, if it had lasted six more months, all the Dutch would be dead from starvation. People were dying in the streets every day. The bridges bombed and the railroad could no longer run. Food could no longer get into the cities. Their faith in God and decency of all people and all races gave them strength. Wow, what a story. We think we have it tough, and we do have it tough. This is not a difficult, this is not an easy time, no question about it. But we know that even in the difficult times and difficult places, God uses, comes, God's Spirit comes into us and fills us up with faith and courage to do uh, good things. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. Even when we don't know how to pray, the very Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. You know, when you do therapy, therapists are trained to, to listen for those sighs. And if you, if you know therapy, you've probably had your therapist has caught you when you've had a sigh and they say, what's that about? Those sighs can come deep from within our soul and reveal uh, the depth of what we're struggling with. This line, we all, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. It doesn't say that God plans everything or God does everything, that God is in charge of every single thing that happens. It just says that, that in no matter what happens, God will work together for the good of those who love God, 
who are called according to God's purpose. So God wants the good for us even in the midst of trial and tribulation. So we, we, can, we can rest on that faith that there is a spirit working in and through us and between us to bring out the good that is possible. That's a positive message for a difficult time. We know that Paul and the early church people were struggling and suffering from oppression from the Roman Empire and persecution um, of Christians. We know they were going through really tough times too and yet they, ma they, they managed to, to stay incredibly hopeful. And this is really what this passage is about, is about hope. Hope that is seen is not hope, but if we hope for those things that we do not see, we wait for it with patience. What then are we to say about these things, Paul continues? <coughs> if God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? So there is this Jesus who came and lived and loved and showed the grace of God available to us. And in the very act of his integrity and love without compromise, he was crucified. And so we see even as, or especially as, he is crucified, that God is unconditional, gracious, and his love will not end. If God is for us, who can be against us? That even if all sorts of stuff happens to us, we know that there is someone in something valuable more valuable and more deep than any of the bad stuff that can happen. We are connected to the God of the entire universe, the God of love, the one who was and is in Jesus Christ, the one who walked and who is uh, risen among us, who is one with that spirit, who intercedes in the when we have sighs that are too deep for words who will bring any charge against God's elect. It's God who justifies, who will condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword or virus or racism no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord.